Hello beautiful people and welcome back to the Black Wallet, a space where we have challenged ourselves to build generational wealth, up to three generations at least. If I start something, I expect it to run through three or four generations. Look at Coca-Cola, I mean, they've been there for generations and generations. So if Coca-Cola can do it, why can't we? That is the challenge that is on this channel. If you're watching it for the very first time, you are welcome and I challenge you too. In today's video, I wanted to share with you realistic budgeting tips that I have used over a while that have really been helpful. It's important that you are able to save as much as you can and invest as much as you can. So if a budget is going to help you save a few coins, I mean, why not? Take it up and let's save as much as we can. That's what we're gonna talk about in today's video, so stay tuned. So you know where a month begins and you are the one with the biggest trolley in the mall, yeah, the one with the biggest trolley, put in whatever you can because a month has begun and you feel like I don't have this, I don't have that. And I just used to feel that having a big trolley will save me much money when it's actually not true. What I learned over time is I don't need the whole trolley. It doesn't mean when the month begins, I need to shop. What it means is when the month begins, for example, I have to look out for what I do not have that I need. Toiletries, for example, I've run out of tissue. As a result, I found that I saved much money, so much money that at the end of the month, I'm able to keep maybe a thousand kwacha of groceries that I used to use maybe all of it at the beginning of the month. So you don't need the big trolley. You just need what you don't have at home. That will save you enough money. The second thing I have learned is it's very important to keep both cash and card. I know we are in a tech world where no, I can swipe on my phone or I can transact using whatever applications that is available. Mobile money if you are in Zambia, for example. What I have learned is it's important that you have both cash and card. Cash is cheaper in an event where you have to pay for certain things. You don't have to pay for a top up of withdrawal, for example, if you are buying vegetables at a market. You really allocate your money to help you spend as cash. In the cash form, if you don't know, we have launched our first product. We launched it in December last year, which is called the Black Wallet. You see more of it here, but the, the goal and the concept of it is to allow you to save both cash and card and track both of them. You are in control of your money and you are able to interact with them. Having card and cash is important because it saves you a lot. Maybe you want to pay for a top up. It's at midnight, for example. You need to top up electricity. You need to top up on your phone. You have some money budgeted in your card you are able to make that payment if you're going to the market you can use cash for example because not everyone has a point of sell so it's very important you both you keep both card and cash the next thing that i have adopted which has saved me a lot of money is i make sure that chills are a reward at the end of the month i've really focused more on on going out as a reward after I'm able to have accounted for what I've spent, what I've earned, and going out becomes like a reward, like a space where I need to feel free after the productivity, after the goals I've achieved in a week, in a month, I'm able to reward myself with an outing. I've discovered over time that because I'm delaying my outing, I seem to save a lot of money with that going out at the end of the month as opposed to the first i find that i still even have some change the money i budgeted for fun really becomes more because i only went out once and i know i'm going out once maybe at the end of the month or close to um the end of the month however events come up right maybe for for my fun i've I've budgeted for events as well. I've budgeted for maybe a learning course I want to take that's like outdoor. That becomes something that I want to reward myself with. So that counts as well. I found that doing that helps me be more productive, stick to my budget, and also be mindful of how I'm spending. If I, if I went out, for example, at the beginning of the month, 
And because I went out, I'm more tempted to say, oh, but there are so many weeks I want to go out, you know. But if it's at the end of the month, I find that it's a, re it's a relief. I'm using that to clap for myself. I'm delaying my gratification. As a result, I'm constantly sticking to my budget the other thing about budgeting that has really helped me realistically speaking is being aware of your little foxes these are little things that at the end of the day cost you so much but you don't pay attention to number one is the mobile money transactions for me to send money from airtel to airtel I am charged certain ways. Let's take, for example, 17 Gwe because I'm transferring money from phone number A to phone number B. If I'm transferring money from Airtel to MTN, I'm also charged. The cost is quite high then because they're different networks. If I'm transferring money to FNB to APSA, I am charged as well. Maybe it could be 20 kwacha. If I withdraw money from an ATM, I'm actually charged eight kwacha, right? So imagine in a month, I've done a transfer from my account to mobile money. There's a fee I have to pay. I'm sending money to a friend. There's a fee I have to pay. So it's very important that you understand that this little money, it's little, sums up to an amount. I did a survey and one day I just calculated. I want to understand and I want to take account of all the costs with mobile money, with FNB, with ABSA. So I, I calculated everything and trust me, it was almost 500 at the end of uh, the month. Those are the little transactions that I did. So I went to the bank, I did this, I withdrew from here. At the end of the month, it was almost 500 kwacha. The same 500 kwacha, do you know you can buy bonds with the same amount? So it seems little, but it really does accumulate over time and can really be profitable to the journey that we want to get on. So that's where the concept of keeping both cash and card came from because I saw how much I was spending on transactions, which was really way too much. You have the banking services already. And then on top of that, you're adding the commissions. You're literally giving banks commissions for doing interbank accounts. The next thing that I learned, realistically speaking, meal prep has really helped me a lot because I'm able to save a lot of money. Take for example, I just need a variety of my protein, which could be soya chunks, which could be chicken, which could be sausage in a particular week, for example. At the end of it, I'm able to cut down costs on eating out. And at the same time, I'm able to maintain a healthier lifestyle. So yes, meal prep is one of the ways that I've been able to save a lot of money, save a lot of time, and has really been convenient for me you also want to leave room for your wants what is it that you might want to buy it's important you have a budget for it i mean we have to be human at the end of the day you want to also enjoy your money it could be a book a, a recently launched book for example that you want to buy if you have a budget for your wants you really leave room to enjoy your life you leave room to be able to to buy what you want within your budget. So it's also important that you create a certain amount of money that is budgeted for your wants, things that you don't plan for, things that are really random. You also want to have days when you just decide I'm not spending. Train yourself to have those days. You don't have to spend every single day. You also don't have to spend everywhere you go. It's important that sometimes you just stay home. There's a saying that in Lusaka, once you step outside your door, the expenses start, which is true. I don't know, but it just happens. Like even things you didn't plan for just start happening. So it's important you have days when you are intentional about not spending. That will help you stick to your budget. In short, every budget must be realistic. It must be something measurable, something attainable. It should have when you're spending and you should really have time but most importantly you should interact with your budget throughout the month it's important that you create a specific day when you're going to review your budget i prefer sunday because that's the day i know okay i'm home let me be in charge let me also prepare for the week ahead it's important that you pause 
and be in charge and just see where your money is going is it going as per planned is it going out of plan you really have to be in control and over time you get better at planning for your money that's basically today's video and i hope this was helpful until the next video bye